All of the top riders lined up across the front. The start so critical in the sport of cyclocross as you need to be at the front to get the whole shot to be at the front of this race before things string out through the back because you may never see the front of the race again if you drop into the back of the field. As I said, only the second time they've ridden this course in a World Cup. What are some of the significant features of this course you think could be pivotal for this race today? Van and Bosch riding this race like there aren't any more laps to go. He's, he's hammering off the front right now. He's clearly got great legs. Is Tone Van and Bosch able to keep that pace really high and stay across it? Yes, he's out of the saddle and he's just he's just launching it. Now Sweck is going across. Sweck is going to take the initiative to bring back Tone Van and Bosch instead of Ili Izerbit. So it's Van der Bosch, Sweck, and then Ezerbeet in the first three. But now Sweck goes right past Van der Bosch, as does Ezerbeet, and we've had a change at the front. Now Ezerbeet jumping up in front. Now, so Ezerbeet coming to the front. You can see how fast he's off the bike, how quickly he's going. He's just one foot in front of the other all through these stairs, and you can see a lot when these riders are running on the stairs. Their body language, how quick they're going, but right now Sweck looking like a boxer in the ring. The left hand, right hand going back and forth. So more than 10 riders within 10 seconds of the front right now. Some of these riders aren't going as hard as they can yet, but it's sections like this that are going to really start to dictate the race as it goes down. Everyone pretty much clustered together. No one getting away here on lap number six. Yeah, but now there's a bit of separation. Swack finds himself now in that third group with his teammate Jordan Wirschiota up there already. Now in third spot, the under-23 world champion on this track making the selection. But Easterbit, now this is this is the moment right now. He's putting together a big move after the back of Ton Van Bosch put it together. Now Van der Puda, Swack, everyone's trying to get on terms. You see Timo Nays coming out. But right now, this is Easterbit and Michael Van Torn out show. Wow, this is a huge move. I think that he capitalized, like I said, from Tone Van Bosch, and now it's going to come down to Sweck. We can see there, this is, a, this is a big move. For a while, it was a group of about 10, and now Lawrence Sweck, a distant third here. That group of 10 has blown apart. And again, this could be the pivot point in the entire afternoon for the men's competition. Top three, separated by three seconds with three laps to go. Here's the big climb once again, and here's Ezerbeet really digging deep to try and open it up. Wow, yeah, Ezerbeet there is a huge move. You can see the difference in Caden Sweck pushing the big gear. This isn't going to be the place where Sweck's going to be able to do the big damage. It's going to be Ezerbeet. Ezerbeet knows he looks back. That is, is this making a difference as he throws his head left and right? That's the question right now. Is this already a race for second place, or are Sweck and Van Tornhout still close enough, and is Ezerbeet may be vulnerable enough that they could still be battling for the win. Here is Eric Bruner, who was 17th on this course at the World Championships, two minutes down. But he has a chance to now battle for the podium here, just seconds behind our top three on the penultimate lap of the day. One lap to go. Eric Bruner within three seconds of the top three with one lap left to go of a World Cup race here on U.S. soil. And now Easterbit's winding it up, coming into the barriers. It's going to be quick down off the backside of the mountain here and then look for a huge effort. This is where they're going to go past that tree. This is where it really kicks up. So yes, you see now Easterbit really starting to pour it on now. And trying to make that move once again. This is the big climb on the course. Sweck trying to match him. They had Tornhout losing a little ground here with Ezerbeet at the front, turning the screws and cranking up the pressure once again. Yeah, and over the top here, this is where you really have to keep going. This, You see, look at the face of Lauren Sweck. He's just sitting there. This is the moment when, as a rider, you have to zone out and just let it all happen. These two riders finished 1-2 in the standings last week in the season opener in Wisconsin. It was Ezerbeet just ahead of Sweck. And now it's a straight-on sprint for the win. Sweck leading it out. Ezerbeet on his wheel. Lawrence Sweck moves over to the left-hand side of the row. Now Ezerbeet coming up on his right. Pedal stroke for pedal stroke. And it's Ezerbeet at the line, winning for the second week in a row. And Ellie Ezerbeet, two for two on the Cyclocross World Cup this season. Michael Van Torenhout, after just missing out on the podium last week, is on the podium in third here today in Fayetteville.